Oh. Ooh. A new horror film is sweeping the landscapes of, of the internet, mostly the internet. I feel like a lot of traditional horror movie fans are not having a lot of fun with this movie. Nope. And that movie, of course, is Skidamarink. <laughs> have seen Skin and Marink around. It got a bunch of hype online. There was a leak of the footage from a film festival and all of a sudden on TikTok and Reddit and all these other different places on the internet are talking about Skin and Marink. It's the scariest movie we've hit of our generation. It's like The Exorcist. It's, it's that much of an impact. Today I just wanted to talk about this little film. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't. I wanted to talk about, you know, give you my thoughts on it. This is all this is all subjective. Also, spoilers alert. Even though it's kind of hard to spoil this movie because it's like, you know, nothing happens, really. You know when people were like, oh, Blair Witch Project, nothing happens. It shit happens in Blair Witch Project compared to this movie, dude. This is a slow burn. Slow, slow burn. And when I say slow burn, I mean, I'm talking like 86 year old woman with dementia smoking a cigarette, like real slow. You need to be a horror fan and you need to be pretty much a fan of like analog horror, back room, liminal space, bullshit, all that kind of stuff. If you dig that kind of stuff, you might dig this movie. So let's talk about it. Skin of a Rink is a 2022 horror film directed by Kyle Ball with a tiny, tiny budget of $15,000 that was mostly crowdsourced. Kyle does a lot of YouTube videos and stuff. He's a YouTube director, but Skin of a Rink was inspired by his short film, Heck, which is uh, on YouTube now. You can still see it. And it's cool. I, I love the idea that this director came from the independent route of making a movie and he just said, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna go I'm just gonna make this into a long, full-fledged movie. You know, who, who else is doing that? Not, not a lot of people. Once in a while, there's a movie come along where it generates so much buzz that it gets an even bigger theatrical release. Kind of reminds me a little bit of whenever Paranormal Activity, which was also filmed for like $10,000, I think. That blew up, Spielberg gets attached, and he's just like, what's up with all these Christian fucks making about the Jews? I'm kidding, we can't put that in. <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by Gamersubs. Listen, I'm a big jolly fat son of a bitch. And Gamer Subs being zero sugar with organic caffeine really makes me think I'm making the best move to strive for getting energy with animes and titty milk with funny names. And that makes me laugh. <laughs> Mix it in some cold water, shake it up, and you're ready to tackle anything in front of you. The taste is great, the energy boost is there, and it's keto friendly. But the real difference between Gamer Subs and the other guys is limited edition waifu cups. These shapely and bouncy shaker cups are the perfect motivator to keep you crushing at the gym or on the battlefield. And I bet you're wondering, how can I get one of these waifu cups? Well, with Gamer Subs, there's plenty of waifu cups to go around. And within the next 24 hours, if you use promo code PAPAMEAT in the checkout, you get free samples, baby. And I'm talking any flavor you want. Samples, 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 free! They just want you to try it. Because they're so sure that once you have a taste of this delicious little concoction, you won't go back. Thank you, Gamersubs, for sponsoring the video, and back to the video. But it does remind me of Paranormal Activity, which had a very small theatrical run, and then all of a sudden it blows up, becomes all popular, just of word of mouth, and you know, people are pouring in to see it. I mean, this movie already has grossed $2 million in the box office. Kyle! Hats off to you, buddy. A lot of criticism has come this way. A lot of people are like, this movie's boring. I don't like this, it, it, this movie sucks. Or people are saying that this is the single greatest horror movie to ever grace this earth. It's very polarizing. I mean, I haven't found someone who was just like, eh, it's all right, in a, in a weird way. That's how I feel. I feel like I'm in this kind of middle of the road where I'm like, eh, I didn't love it. It's not like I hated it by any means. But I'm not like, you know, throwing myself onto the ground crying, oh my god, it's the best! I don't think I'm doing that. But the movie starts off with our main boy, Kevin. Kevin? Kevin. He's a young, young boy. I think he's, what is he, four? He's four years old. Falls down some steps. <laughs> His dad's making a call, basically being like, yo, Kevin fell down them steps. We gotta get this little boy some help. So the movie basically follows Kevin and his sister who is six. What's the sister's name? Kaylee. 
follows Kevin and Kaylee. They get put to bed, but when they wake up, they notice that their dad's gone. Yeah. Doors are starting to vanish. Objects in their home are starting to vanish. Stuff is just going all sorts of sideways. So young duo decides to go downstairs and use the TV as a safe haven to watch cartoons until they can go to bed. See if they can't figure out what the fuck is going on. The setup and everything is genuinely very creepy. I mean, this movie is the epitome of atmosphere. I talk about horror a lot, and I talk about how atmosphere is very important. <clears throat> how atmosphere is very important. And let me tell you, this movie oozes atmosphere. It, it completely captures the idea of feeling like you're totally unsafe. It uses very nostalgic or recognizable set pieces or rooms, atmospheres in a house to kind of give you a feeling that you've been in this house yourself, which I think is awesome. I mean, so many of the shots in this movie, I feel like I have had this kind of view as a child or, you know, you, you, you've you been at a slumber party before and it's just the way that you look at a doorway or the way that you look at the corner of a room with a little bit of light flickering off. It's just very very creepy. It invokes a very childlike sense of horror to me for some reason. I don't know if that's the right term I want to use, but I'm going to say childlike sense of horror. <coughs> the main source of light in the whole movie is this TV. So it's a very dark, grimy movie, but the light is always kind of talking. It's always dancing on the walls. It's it's really vibrant and animated. It's it's very unsettling. It's the whole movie captures the unsettling aspect very very well. I think you start to lose people is with the amount of holds and the amount of times that we sit and breathe in these scenes, which like I said, this movie is a slow burn. All of these things are intentional. It's not trying to just, I think, pad runtime. I think that he is trying to instill the sense of, you know, time passing through this movie and also what is going on in this house. We, you know, we're, we're, we're just as lost with these children and it feels very haunting, but that's where some of the first gripes that I have with the movie come in is that without a huge clear sense of narrative direction we kind of just lost in this limbo of very artistic atmospheric beautiful shots that all feel very catered to this aesthetic but it feels like the substance behind these shots um, is just to play crackling audio and kind of bait people into feeling like something's going to run out of the shadows and grab them which is fun but for a feature length movie after a while, it feels like I, I want more. Through a lot of these camera angles that are pointed at doors or toys or TVs or something, we sit through that for about 30 minutes and then we're introduced to our first real big like, ooh, ooh, this is spooky, which is where one of the kids, I believe it's Kevin, goes up to the uh, parents' room and the parents are sitting there in silence and it's just this dark, dimly room. It's very, very, very creepy. I mean, this is the point where, I mean, your asshole is as clenched as it can possibly be. I mean, you are possibly popping your back because your asshole is so clenched. But we get uh, a bit of a rug pull feeling. You know, we are in this room and, you know, you look down into the bed and nothing happens. And go ahead and look again. You look down again and oops, the parents are gone. <laughs> and then high decibel screeching noise and then we're back which subjective alert. For me, that's an annoying rug pull. I remember when I was watching this, I was just kind of like, oh, come on. Just give me something. Give, give me something to want me to, make me want to stick with this because I already have had 30 minutes of the aesthetic that you've wanted me to absorb, you know, the atmosphere that you've been giving me. I've been chomping it up in a big old bowl. Ooh, this is nice but it doesn't ever take another huge step. I feel like I'm always kind of just stuck on this first step of aesthetic over the evolution of the story of Kevin and this kind of like limbo that he's in, this dream that he's having almost. And it's like, yes, the movie invokes this great sense of fear and it understands, it knows exactly how to tap into the aesthetic of what this dream-like horror is like. But beyond that, I, I just kept feeling like we kept hitting a nice refresh button we would go, we'd wait, we'd sit through our cutscenes of aesthetically pleasing shots. The kids would kind of interact with something, something would happen, and then we would get a refresh back to it. And it's just repetition after repetition, we get the same thing. So it's, they're setting up these blocks, and usually what happens is you're, then your horror brain starts kicking in, it's like, oh, they're trying to lower our defenses, so then whenever something happens, we really get shocked and scared. But that never really comes. Which, that's fine, and that's innovative, and that's kind of cool, but 
there's just no substance and there's nothing that is pushing these shots to be anything more than just beautifully aesthetic horror shots. When you keep having these things that are repeated to you, you want to have these shots slowly evolve and you want to see them transform and you want to feel that the progression of where you started is different than where you end. And that doesn't mean that like, at the beginning it was just shots of a corner and then at the end they put a demon in there or a, there, was a, there was a Dracula in the skin of a rink. <laughs> it's not that, it's just how do you, I think the question to me, and I don't know the answer necessarily, I think just as a viewer, I ask myself, what is the evolution of this? How do you, how can you keep deriving things? Can you sit there and can you maybe have the characters talk more? Can you hear their sanity kind of like slowly unfolding from a child's perspective? The menacing foe who's trapping this child into this never ending limbo is uh, personified as the dad, which I don't know if that's true or not, but that's just how I read it, and you get a nice little faceless rendition of him towards the end. Which is good and fun, but once again, it's just there's so little there and it's so ambiguous, which the ambiguity is fine, but for me, in my opinion, you know, you can take it, you could have deciphered this in a whole different fucking way, but for me, it's just the adventure felt one note the entire time. Yes, that note is fun, but I think for an effective horror, melody you gotta have a couple notes you gotta have something to dance to you have to have something that makes you want to kind of keep trickling along and has these ups and downs if it's just a slideshow of shots that are just building aesthetic that's fine but the lack of substance there was just something that felt like a lot of opportunities that i feel like i wish would have been explored on and somehow evolved over time i'm not sure how that would be but you know that's just what i was left with i kind of just left feeling like hmm I wish there was just a bit more. And it kind of made me think as well that the runtime just felt so long. I felt like I was in this dream sequence for so long, which felt intentional, but for me, it kind of posed the question was, is it as effective as his short horror film, Heck, which is pretty much the same premise, except I think it's about 30 minutes long. And when I watched Heck, the experience felt more to the point, more to the juggler, more to the jugular, and it felt like it was concentrated and effective and inspired. Whereas this, it kind of just felt very bloated. It felt like it didn't really know where it was going. It kind of knew what it wanted to do, and it just said, I'm gonna do that for an hour and a half. It made me think that, you know, people that are making like Mandela catalog, liminal space, type horror online, all of this stuff is much shorter. You know, it's coming from an independent place. They don't have time to make feature length films all the time. It's just short and effective. These little punchy stories that are made are able to generate such a conversation about what did this just happen? You get a little bite-sized sampling that you get to run off with and let your mind kind of go. It directly gives the information that it wants to give you and then it is able to sneak out the back door versus a full feature length film, it kind of tells you what it wants to tell you and then it just kind of uncomfortably stands <laughs> in the corner of your room and it's just like, eh, um, I'm just gonna hang back here for a while while you kind of think about this. The film is effective with its aesthetic, it's effective with knowing how to play with tension and atmosphere and how to utilize very minimal dialogue, pacing, sound effects, music, it's all brilliantly done. The only thing that falls short to me is the narrative and where I wanted maybe the, some of these aesthetic choices to continuously push throughout the film versus just give me the same kind of aesthetic for the entire film. You get a little bit of it, it gets a little more abstract towards the end, but far too little, a little too late is what I would say. So it just feels like a movie that is really brilliant, very inspired, but feels like for me personally, it missed the mark a little bit of making this a truly memorable experience besides it being this fucking cultural phenomenon. Like, I mean, obviously people are gonna be like, you're gonna know this movie. If you're a horror fan, you're gonna know this movie. There's no getting around it. I mean, this is this is gonna be something that's, I think it's gonna spark more inspiration for the mainstream, but I'm really stoked to see Blumhouse come out with a skin of rink style movie. I, I, I think there's gonna be a lot of like weird, weird movies coming out trying to, emulate the style without really knowing how to do it and it's going to be very odd and hopefully pretty funny. In conclusion, if I I mean if I had to give it a rating, I would say 6 out of 10. Is that fair? This is just my opinion. I'd give it a 6 out of 10. All right. I give it a lot of I have a lot of respect for Kyle for making this fucking film, going above and beyond making an independent project something that is 
now so heavily sought after. It's in theaters. He should be very proud of himself. Aesthetically, he knew exactly what he was going for. The style of this movie is brilliant. No one is going to take that away from you. I just think for me personally, the movie needed more of a narrative. It needed more direction in that way. I wanted to see the style that you beautifully finessed evolve and add to the horror over time versus kind of giving me this little uh, Chili's bite size sampler throughout the entire uh, movie. So that's my, that's my opinion. I would definitely recommend it, you know, come on. It's not fucking Conjuring, all right? This is a dope independent director that you should definitely check out. So give him some fucking love. Go, it's on Shutter right now or rented on Amazon. If it's still playing in a local theater, go see it in the movies. It's probably gonna be awesome on the big screen. Support this man and uh, check it out. Also, let me know what you thought below. Give us some critical thought too. Don't just be like, oh, I was so bored watching the film. I just couldn't do it. I scratched my dick and bleh. And also, if you comment that it's the greatest horror film ever made, I'd love for you to tell me why. I don't know. Skin and Marink. Go see it. I hope you love it. I'd hate to, I hate to be trapped inside of a home with no doors. Just in general. I don't have any doors. I feel, well, I have a window. I guess I could, I could crawl out the window if I had to. I'm gonna make a horror film all about fucking gaining weight. <laughs>